What's up, you guys? It's Jordan Jones. I just finished my interview with the Zach Sang Show. We talked about my upcoming EP, breakups, boyfriends, the whole nine yards. Stay tuned. Let's do this. Zach Sang Show, beautiful humans. We got Dan, we got Hello. me, and we got Jordan Joe. Yes. Hanging What's out in the studio. Hey. Good to see you. You too. You bring a really positive energy into the room. I, I dig it. Thank you. I'm a Pisces. That's what we do. <laughs> I know that about you because I was watching your uh, Who Has the Best Boyfriend video today. Yes. Good job. You doing your research? Let's oh, go. <laughs> very in. Dude. I was watching you on the way here, so we're both at the same. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much no. of my voice. It makes people go go a little nauseous. You're like famous for your voice. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. But this boyfriend thing and this whole YouTube lifestyle, is this a lifestyle that like was unexpected to you? Did you ever really think that this was going to be how you live your life? Definitely not. I mean, I'm born in Michigan. I like we have a house there <laughs> on a farm. Like it's it's absolutely nothing like California at all. I not even maybe a small town in California. Like, there's nothing there. We have one stoplight. Where, Michigan? Kalamazoo, Michigan. <laughs> Love it. Like, Three Rivers, Kalamazoo, <laughs> Schoolcraft. Like, that's all my hood there. And, yeah, growing up, I was just a dancer and had, obviously, dreams of being a pop star. And, you know, back then, you didn't even know what social media was. So, it wasn't even a dream of mine to even start an Instagram because I didn't know what it was. But, but you had access to the internet growing up, right? Because yes. you're still, you're 19. Yes, I'm almost 19, 18 now. Almost 19. You look so young. Oh my gosh, you sound way over there. Oh no, face. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do sound young, I do look young, I get that a lot. That's a good thing though. 18 is young. 18 is young. But, but you did grow up with the internet, right? Like uh, computers in your school and stuff like that, obviously. Yeah, we had computers in school and that's like it. I had a... Um, what was it called? A like a what's a palm that pilot? phone? That phone that you had to put limits on when you're a kid that you would get. Wait, is it like a, is it prepaid? Yes, but, I don't know. I had that phone that you could call like your dad and your mom, and that was it. Yeah, when I was oh, like six, and I then I got an iPhone when I turned like twelve. See, it's crazy. I remember when they released those because they were such a big that. deal because you can only call two. It's the cell phone for kids. Yeah, and then emergency, like 911. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. And I, my generation grew up with like razors and like sidekicks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what a sidekick is? Is that like the... Yeah, yes. almost. It, you don't slide it though. You hit one button and it kind of... That's oh. the noise it makes. So I went from... Track phone. Oh. Track that's it. phone. Track phone. I think... I think that's what it's called, yeah. to a LG where it slid. It was green phone. Oh, nice. And then an iPhone 3 or 4. So when you start dancing, was being a pop star a dream when you first started, or did that dream form? Yeah, it kind of formed. It was it was more of a, okay, I want to be a professional dancer. That's my dream. I I even wanted to be in Billy Elliot at one point in my life, cool. and that's when I like started singing kind of. And then I was really wanting to sing when Frozen came out, the movie. <laughs> I was singing all the songs, and then that's when I was like, okay, I want to... It was also when I moved out to LA, it was, okay, Frozen came out, I'm singing, I'm in a girl group, I'm a rapper in the group, and then it was like, okay, next step is I'm gonna be a pop star. You knew. Yeah. But when do you join the Abby Lee Dance Mom whole community? Is mm -hmm. that in Michigan, or is that when you come to Studio City? So that was when I semi lived in Michigan, semi was living in apartments or hotels at the time in California because I was going back and forth for jobs Got it. whenever I would book it. But they found me on YouTube. They found a solo of mine on a YouTube channel that I didn't even post. And then they wanted me to do a Skype call. And then I went to New York to actually have an interview with them. And then that's when the show happened in downtown LA. Oh, whoa. So you weren't like a member of her dance company before that no or way, anything yeah. like that? No. You were doing your own thing posting on YouTube? Yeah, kind of everyone that was on that show didn't really have a relation to her before at all. Got it. And we didn't even know that the show was even Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. There was no relation to Abby Lee Miller. They totally hid that from us until we literally were on camera. They were like, okay, this show's actually called Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, and Abby Lee Miller is going to be the coach. Like, it was called My Kid Can Dance. Well, and what do you think when you find out that she's the coach? Um. Well, my mom was way more excited than I was, obviously, because <laughs> she was... Like, 
she's been, she owned the studio in Michigan with my dad. Oh, cool. So she was always in the dance world and watching those shows and always, I don't know, she just looked up to Abby Lee Miller. I don't know what it was, so she freaked out. But I was just more excited because to get the training from her, and it was so, like, it took us, like, from for a loop. Like, it was so unexpected. What do you learn from Abby that you hadn't learned from any other dance teacher before her? Well, it was also my first time dancing on a TV show and kind of my first TV show. So it was also like I got to, I I learned how to work on camera and to be on time and like be on set and long hours and all of that stuff. So it was totally different from being in my studio from like 3 to 9 p.m. And so it was was also just getting ready to be in the industry. It kind of shaped me for that. And she's just very strict, so it's unlike any training, really. Did your mom own the dance studio before you started dancing? No, she did not. She bought it, I think, three years or two years after I've been dancing there, maybe even longer after that, maybe seven years. I have no idea. But I just know that she told me she bought the studio, and that was like the happiest day of my life because I loved that studio. And then I I got to do like all the classes and you know I was always like a boss girl so I would always tell people like not go in the back room and do not go in this room and okay stores are closed like get out and then I would walk across the street to the mall with my friends and yeah I was always kind of I felt like also an owner with my mom. (laughs) So dance is hard like I tap dance for six years when I was younger. Let's go. Thank you. But it's a huge commitment. Yeah. I was d- dancing with people who literally lived at the studio and gave every fiber of their being to it. It's insane. It kind of just pulls you in. And it's, I don't know, dance is like a drug for me. I feel like you just can't stop or you need more or whatever it is. And it's it's crazy because I would want to stay after hours and freestyle in the room all alone by myself just playing music even though I know I had to do homework or you know be at school the next day and I just couldn't wait till the bell rang to go to the dance studio after it was like the only thing I looked forward to living in Michigan did you miss anything that you wish you didn't miss because of dance um not really really yeah because that was my life and that was the only thing I wanted to do and it's kind of like if I wanted I don't know, there wasn't even anything. It wasn't when I needed to be at a school dance or have a boyfriend or none of that stuff. It was like my focus was dance. Do you still dance six hours a day every day now? No, but actually this morning I had a dance class and it was so much fun. It's Since I've focused more on singing now, it's basically way, way less time. It's more of I dance when I'm in rehearsals, getting ready for a show or something like that. How long have you been in L.A. now? Um, I think seven years, eight years. Wow. But before that, I was back and forth, you know, playing. I was staying, I was in the air longer than I would have been in Michigan or <laughs> L.A. Like, I was literally back and forth so much that I don't even remember, like, the exact year I moved here. Does the Ultimate Dance Competition change your life, like, in terms of fame? Yeah, it did. That was uh, the day that they announced the show being a show because we had hide it for like six months or something I hit a million followers on Instagram that day and I was one of the only people out in LA who kind of had a million followers if you weren't like Justin Bieber (laughs) so it was a big deal for me and a lot of people because it wasn't social media influencer or social media wasn't really that big back then I think it was 2004 14 or 15 when I had a million followers so it's like a long time ago and people think that that's so cool that I had a million followers back then but that show really made me get known all around the world even because that show would play other places and every time I meet people they're either like oh my god I love your singing or I love your YouTube videos or I saw you at Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition (laughs) like it's one of those three things. What kind of videos were you making before the Ultimate Dance Competition that got you even close to a million followers? Well I was just posting every day on Instagram or like four times a day. Like Of what? I, I don't know, just random things, selfies, Tilt Tuesday. If it was Tuesday, I posted that. I was just always on the popular page for a random reason. Like I don't know why they, they would always put my photos on everyone's feeds, but I just kept growing and growing and doing fan contests. And it was just, I, I wasn't expecting it. Were you doing YouTube videos at the time? Well... Whenever I would have a dance solo, my mom would buy the footage 
and they would post it on YouTube, just my solos. Like I didn't post normal videos. It was just my dance solos. And that br- that's crazy to I me. I know, it's really weird. <laughs> that's cool. Well, I mean, yeah, that kind of seems like weird fate or lottery or... Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people were doing it, but I don't know, I just like happened to get a million followers from posting on Instagram and YouTube. So beyond Frozen and you singing Frozen, do you want to become a singer? Do you realize that you want to become a singer because maybe you realize that, I don't know, like dancing is a hard industry to be in. Mm -hmm. Money's not great. You Mm -hmm. can get hurt one second. Yep. You could be done forever. Yep. Well, I don't know. It was was mainly because how I worked is whatever I did, I had to be the best at it. And then once I felt like secure and at what I at the goal I wanted to be at it was like okay time to move on next thing next thing because I knew I didn't want to be a dancer the rest of my life I didn't want to be backup dancing for Miley Cyrus like I want to be the Miley Cyrus you know what I mean so it was like I I worked and worked and then when I got to the point I was like okay time to act okay time to be a rapper okay time to be a singer so it's like now I'm at the exact goal I want to be and then now I'm reaching to the touring and the number one singles and all of that stuff so that's where i'll be soon interesting transition to go from a rapper (laughs) to a singer yeah would you consider yourself a real rapper like could you flow can you mumble (laughs) something yeah like i i could rap because growing up i only i was my favorite style at the studio in dance class was hip hop. Like I begged my mom to have a hip hop solo. There was no one else that was in the hip hop category. So if I was the last jazz solo at the competition and I was first in the hip hop section, I would have to get off of stage. And by the time that they were done announcing my hip hop solo to come back on stage, I would have changed my hair and makeup and the outfit backstage to go right back on stage. So hip hop, I just fell in love with it. And then I wanted to rap so I did, and then I made a cover, and it had 50 million views. Are you talking about Fancy? Which one? No, Banji. It's my number, uh. like, my highest viewed video, and, yeah, I, like, was, like, booty dancing in it and, like, rapping, and no one saw, no one would have expected that from me, so it kind of just blew up, and all the comments were, like, freaking out over why I was rapping and twerking. <laughs> was that your first and last rap attempt, or did you rap more after that? I rapped, that was the first one ever. That was okay. the first one. And it was the first cover I ever did. And then I did like four or five after that. But when you're covering a record and you're doing a rap cover or something, are you putting your own verses in it, but using the beat, or are you reciting the same rap lyrics? Well, when they would swear or be like ratchet or anything that I wasn't about, we would <laughs> we would we would change the lyrics a little bit with the producers and the writers, but mainly, yeah, I would keep the exact same lyrics. You have a, don't take this the wrong way, but even like your little mama cover <laughs> and even even the fancy one, like there's a wholesome, but still like kind of almost ratchet vibe that exists, yeah. but it's not totally, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, like I'm not, I'm not like a girly girl that much. I'm more of a tomboy and I like to wear sweatpants rather than dresses. And I was just always with the boys and that's just like who I am. So how many rap songs did you put out all together? I would say seven, six, okay. but so covers. At that moment, you retire your rap career. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, nah, it's like going to work. <laughs> you've, you've conquered that. I, so. would, I would only be called like Lil Iggy and all these things. So then I was like, okay, I'm not going to be somebody else. I just want to be myself. I don't want to be called, oh, she looks like this person or she's this person's daughter. Like, I just was done with that. And I was like, okay, I need to be original, find my own sound. And that's when I was going into singing. Cool. And the first time you go into the studio, do you write with the the artist, uh, w- with everybody else in the studio, or are you taking songs and like picking through ones that matter to you or represent you? I've gone through everything. So the first cover I did, I I obviously just did a cover. So I did her lyrics and everything. I just got in the studio and did it. And then the first time I was in the studio for an original song by me, um, it was. I can't even remember the first song. Was I it ever... Bruh? No, it wasn't. That was, oh, I forgot about Bruh. I did a, that was my original rap song. So for that one, I got sent that song from a producer, Iza Kizza, in Las Vegas. And I had to go to Vegas and uh, record that song with him. And so I didn't write that song at all. He just sent it to me. I vibed with it and I did it. 
But then for the EP I've been working on now, I was in the studio for a couple of them and writing in two of them. Cool. And just, I just fell in love with it. So that's why I was like, okay, this is where I want to be. I, studio time is like my favorite, my favorite place to be. And when I'm in the studio recording, fun fact, I have to have like all the lights off in my socks and I, I don't know, I just like close my eyes and I can't see anyone and no one can see me and I'm in my little bubble. You're comfy. Yeah, I'm comfy. So I'm all about comfort. Dappin, bruh, these are records that are a part of one chapter. Yeah. And leave <laughs> is the start of a new one? Well, I kind of did summer and all I need and then Firecracker was, Firecracker was a song that was kind of a mix and the in the middle of my rap career to my pop career. Okay, transitional piece. Yeah. Got it. And then, yeah, Leave is my official first like poppy dance song and it's crazy. I haven't heard it yet. You haven't? No. And by the time, yeah. I, I I haven't heard it because everybody's going to be watching this might be seeing it after the song's already released. We're talking the day before release. Go and listen to it. Yes. But, but the visuals, I keep seeing the teasers and stuff like this. Yeah. What is the biggest difference between Leave and Firecracker and everything else that came before? Well, what I would kind of say about that is I was kind of doing it for fun and trying it out, you know. I was testing the waters before and just seeing if that's what I really wanted to do, but it's like now is like my official like real and it's like this is what I'm gonna do so it's it's just different for me and it's on a more real level and it's more official and it it's just more secure I don't know it just makes me feel like more official this time like this release is te- I'm kind of considering it like my first release I understand that that makes sense yeah so what was there like a defining thing that happened that you were like okay this is gonna be the legit one this is it's because I spent the last year and a half finding my voice and in the studio, and it's like now that I'm more developed and more trained and just been doing it for longer, I feel just more confident even with it. And it's like, okay, I found my voice, this is what I'm gonna sound like, and I this is the first record I'm putting out of the rest of my career. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, Leave, did yeah. you write on that, or was that one that you just heard and you were like, this makes sense? So this song came about very crazy to me. I I had, okay, so Borges and his team found my manager or me and were like, hey, we got this song, we want you to audition for it, basically. Hmm. So they sent me this song, and I I just, you know, when you get sent songs all the time, you you're never, you're kind of just always, you know, sit on your phone, like listening to it, not expecting to be like, oh, like, <laughs> what is this? So I was listening to it and I was so excited about it and so hyped. And the fact that it wasn't, they weren't like offering it to me or they weren't like, here's the song, we want you on it. It was like, here's the song, like, we're gonna see if we want you on it. So I was like, so in love with it. And I was like, okay, I need to be on this song. It's like, when I set my mind to something, I have to do it. And I got the song, I read the lyrics, and I was like, holy crap, like, this is really good, and I want to be on this song. So then I had to be with my producer, I recorded it and sent it to them, and they were like, okay, we're going to get you on the song, we're going to have you re-record it when Borges comes into town. So then I, re-rec- I re-recorded it with him, and that's, that's how it all happened, really. So you liked the fact that it was not handed to you, and it was like more of a challenge. Yeah, because it was kind of more, I don't know, I like challenges, and I I like being surprised with things, so it was kind of when I got that call, like, okay, he wants you on the song, and before I'd find found out I was on the song, I was on Twitter, and I followed Borges to, you know, check up on everything, and because I had already listened to his music before, but I was never following him and listening to his recent songs. So I was listening and I, I DM'd him and I was like, yo, like, I hope you like, I hope you like my verses. I hope you like my song. Like, I hope like, you know, I can work with you. <laughs> and then I was on his profile and he posted something about Fortnite. And I was like, wait, you play Fortnite? And he was like, what's your gamer tag? Let's play right now. So we started playing <laughs> Fortnite and then this yeah. all like happened. And then we still play Fortnite together. And I don't know, it was just like, Twitter, Fortnite, you have the song. That is so 2019. Right? <laughs> so the now, and it's crazy. Yeah, it's a funny story that I wanted to share. That's Fortnite. 
you are very much in the online community. Yeah. How do you break in? Like, how do you meet the group of friends that you kind of hang out with? I don't even know. Like, mainly at events, I meet all these people because they're all in my space and we all just get along. We know what everyone's going through. We all know the struggles that we've been through. We all know the ups, the downs. So it's like you can kind of click with anybody that's at these events. Like this morning, I was with these dancers and I was just clicking with them and getting all their social media. It's like, oh, here's your number. Like, it's not like, oh, let's go get lunch. It's like, oh, let's film a dance video tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's but so different now. Is it a little scary, though? Like, you don't know who's a real friend and who's just there to get a few followers? Of course. That's why I'm kind of my main circle and group of friends is all people that I came up with or all people that I've known for 10 years or whatever it is. Like, my best friend is still lives in Michigan. We grew up together. We were best friends. We named ourselves Bobby and Jack. We went on adventures, like all these <laughs> things. So it's like those people I've stayed close with. And I have I can, I don't know, it's like a thing that my mom taught me was like swerving away from the fake people and you can just read right through people. And it's like a special power I have. So I don't really get involved with fake people and I haven't really had a very bad break or anything from people that a lot of people go through in this industry. Not yet, you're still young, Not knock yet. on wood. But you have a boyfriend. He shares a name, your Ooh, name. That's yeah. so weird. Is it weird? I His thought it Jordan. was weird at first. Yeah, I, I thought it was weird at first. And now we go, our friends call me Jay and him Jordan. Ah. How did he get Jordan? You got stuck with Jay. I don't know. I still, I still complain about it sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> man, why can't I be Jordan? And he's like, but I'm Jordan. And he's like, but I can't be called Jay. Like, that's girly. And... <laughs> It, I don't know, my mom has been calling me Jay, so. It's catching on. It's catching on. But it's really weird when I forget to say babe sometimes, and I'm like, Jordan, and I'm like, ew, I don't like saying that name. <laughs> I don't like my name. How'd you meet him? Because was he an influencer before you guys met? Yes, he was an influencer. He posts on YouTube and everything. And I had gone to his friend's house. He lived with a bunch of YouTubers in Temecula, California. So I was out there already at a show in Oceanside. So I went to his house and we instantly clicked and it, we took a picture with the dog and that was like the start of everything. It was a cute little golden retriever. That's nice. Yeah, it's weird and it's cool and I don't know. Is it weird that it's a public relationship? It's, it's weird, but it's also like I, I can't hide anything and I tried a private relationship all of, of like 2015 and it worked, but I was like, I don't want to do that again because I don't want to do that again. I don't want to hide that from my fans. Have you committed yourself to living public? Yes. It's kind of what you have to do. If, you, if you're an influencer, it's... it's hard to not. I don't know. I feel like I go live, I would have to hide stuff, I would have to... You know, he would post pictures of his house, and if I, you know, try to take a selfie, I'd be like, oh, crap, you can see his bed frame in it. Like, fans are going to know. Yeah. It's like, oh, if we're walking across the street, fans are going to take a picture of it, and instead of hiding it, I'm just going to be real with everyone. Are you 100% real on everything? Yes. Like, you get me, you get me. You don't like me, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> How competitive are you and Jordan when it comes to, like, social media numbers? Um, Well, not really at all, because it's... Because you have more. <laughs> yeah, you have 1.5 no. million. I mean, but it's, it's. I don't ever think like that. You know, I don't think, oh, I have 5.3 million followers or I have 5,000 followers, so I'm better than you or I'm going to track my numbers and I'm going to make, it's not a competition between us. And if it was, then it wouldn't have worked out, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's how, not about that. How long has it been? Like six months. Huh. You made him Congrats. get a tattoo after six months. <laughs> oh, yeah, Wait, I forgot about that. With your name? No. Well, it's also his name. No, it's, yeah, uh, well, it was a unicorn, right? Oh, that's cute. Is it real? Yes. Where is it? Okay, so the story is we were doing a YouTube video saying yes to my girlfriend for 24 hours. It was a trend. Clickbait, baby. So, oh, no, not clickbait. <laughs> this story is 100% real. But um, he had to take a dance class with me. Because I was like, hey, can you take a dance class with me? He had to say yes for 24 hours. No saying no. He, I said, hey, can you get your butt waxed? He got his butt waxed. <laughs> and he was in pain. And now it's growing back all prickly and he keeps complaining. 
<laughs> he's like, I'm a cactus, Jordan. <laughs> and then he had to buy me Je Adore Le Fleur, like flower oh. thing. And then he, I was like, okay, can you go get a tattoo? Oh, I was like, hey, can you drive me to this location? Because I didn't want him to know yet. And he was like, Jordan, no pain. Like, this, we're not allowed to give you, like, we're not allowed to do pain. Like, you can't hurt me. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to be hurting you. Uh. So then we get to the tattoo shop. I'm like, okay, here's the little mini corn, mini unicorn tattoo I want you to get on your leg. So it's hidden. He, It's not like... It, he doesn't have tattoos, so it wasn't a big deal to him. He has like twenty, so it, he doesn't care. Even if I was like, "Hey, can you get a, can you get a Pikachu like right here?" and he would be like, "Yeah, it? yeah," he doesn't really care anymore. So that's why I was okay with having him get a tattoo, and he was okay with getting that tattoo. Well, you're forever on him. <laughs> yeah, it's a little unicorn. If there's not enough YouTube videos of the two of you that will last forever, the, the unicorn, unicorn will, will do the <laughs> trick. <laughs> Is any part of you a little scared about that? Like. Everything you posted lasts forever? Well, you could always delete, but it's It's like, never gone. It's never gone. Yeah. It's it's always there. Fans will always be talking about it. Like my last breakup, people were talking about it for like six months in my comments and his. Like it's it's another it's an on another level. And the only thing that you could do is block comments like, oh, you guys broke up or did you guys break up? So I had to do that for a while because I didn't want to see his name. I didn't want to see anything. Yeah. And then I met Jordan and I was just like, whatever, like we're going to be public. You can't hide it. And then fans, like, I don't know. My fans, though, are different than a lot of people's to where they don't send death threats and they're not like mean because they know that I wouldn't date someone that, you, you know, and if they know if I'm happy, I'm happy. And they're happy. If they DM me, they're like, are you going through a hard time? And I'm like, yes, but everything's okay. Like, we're good. And then they're like, okay, Jordan's good. She's good. <laughs> That's all they need is reassurance. Yeah. I'm, I'm always, all day, they're like, are you stressed about your song coming out tomorrow? And I'm like, no. Like, I'm ready. They're like, okay, then I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> That's great. So you dated an influencer before Jordan? Yes. What did you learn from that relationship? I learned so much. It was almost two years, and it was public, and... And it was just a lot that I went through, a lot that I learned. So my main thing was just I learned how I should be treated, I guess. And now Amen. and now it's almost like bad because I'm now used to so being spoiled by my boyfriend. <laughs> Literally like the standard's we were, so high. We were playing Xbox and he was downstairs and I was upstairs and like my water was like on the table right there and I was like babe can you come up here and get the water he's like where is it I was like on my table he's like fine like I literally like am really spoiled oh now gosh. because he just I don't know he's amazing so I I need to work on that I can get my own thing sometimes <laughs> but I'm like I'm like okay I need to be treated like a queen and I should be treated like me so you're gonna treat me like a queen but there's to an extent you know I should have gotten my glass of water <laughs> whatever there's limits <laughs> I'm learning my limits, but it's fine. It's fine. Leave. Does this record set the tone for the EP that's coming? Of course. Yes. Yes. Was that the first song you finished for this body of work? It was the second, actually. First was Cover Up. Ooh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Release. First was Cover Up. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else, but there's one song called Cover Up, and that was the first one I did. And that was with the producer I've worked with for about two years now. He actually was the first person to produce the first version of Leave before I did it with Borges. Cool. So that song was first, and then every song was after Leave. Wow. What's the story behind Leave? So how I um, read the lyrics and how I interpreted it was about... It was almost kind of relating to my last relationship. You being so perfect for this guy and you treating this guy so well and him you know just if he wants to leave and then guys always do this to where they they always they always see what they had before like when it's too late they mm -hmm. yeah and they realize what they had when it was too late that's what i was trying to say and guys come crawling back or they try to you know you wish you didn't leave when it's cold outside or you don't have a place to stay or you you go through all this stuff and then you just want to crawl back and think that i'm going to answer the phone all the time and it's like that's not how it goes but it's it's just like when you're too good for this guy and they just don't realize it and then it's just getting over it and having fun and it's just such a catchy song that i love to dance to so the lyrics did mean a lot to me but it's also the fact that the like the production of it is so amazing. So is that what you noticed first? You noticed the production before the lyrics? Is that like caught your attention? 
Yeah, because the first time I listened to it, I had it on my phone and I wasn't able to open the lyrics at the same time. Because anytime I listen to a song ever, I have to have the lyrics pulled up. And so I couldn't really focus on the lyrics because I wasn't reading them as I went with it. And so the first thing I noticed was the production. And then the second time I had to have my mom's phone next to me or my laptop or something. And then I listened to the lyrics and looked at them. And I was like, oh. like it, <laughs> it was just like so amazing. It was like a match made in heaven. Yes. <laughs> and Fortnite really sealed the deal. That's match true. Match made in heaven, like my pillow. Uh, that song Dap, and just wondering, I heard Dap, but like you defined it as dancing and snapping. <laughs> yeah. I, Is, we combined it dancing and snapping into one word. I've dapping. heard like, you know, like Dap. Yeah, there's two different versions. I guess people, I I don't smoke weed or anything so I have no idea but I guess like you can hit dabs or something oh no like no that. no that's a dab so, dab okay so no people that's the were, same as the dance move people were confusing I'm dapping to like oh she's hitting dabs oh no so I was like <laughs> no that one's not it and then dapping when you do the handshake people were confusing both of those things and then when we did the music video everyone got it that we were dancing and snapping got it a lot went a lot went around with that song because people were like what is this girl talking about P- picturing you try to take a dab is really fun yeah i just <laughs> is that what you're doing right now a little bit yeah clearly i haven't <laughs> done anything in my life i haven't even t- take to, taken a sip of alcohol i would be, wow. i would go nutto because i'm already like crazy and outgoing i think I would either be super mellow or super outgoing. And then if I, I'm already so, what's the word? Uh, what's the, like, you know, when you smoke weed, I guess you you get really scared. Oh, paranoid. Paranoid, yes. I'm so paranoid. And that would be terrible. Yeah, that's not good for you. That. But paranoid. I feel like why didn't I think of that word? <laughs> I feel like your your boyfriend and his couple hooligan friends, you know, definitely partake in some devil's lettuce. <laughs> so and some early boozing. My boyfriend's older than me, and he said that at Coachella he likes he hit his friends like dab pen because he thought it was a vape or something, and he doesn't do any of that. And now because we're dating, I guess I don't know. He's like super cool with that. He knows huh. that I don't. I don't like that stuff, so he doesn't do that stuff. But he was never, he he never did like anything, and um, he stopped everything when we started dating. Oh, he's dating the queen. He must uh, understand. <laughs> he needs to get it. But he knows, like, if he if he's he's like planning his like twenty first birthday and stuff, and I mean not like actually planning it but he's like i might like take a sip of alcohol on my birthday like, you're gonna be okay with that i'm like yeah like it's your 21st birthday like i'm not gonna tell you what to do you go have fun you should have said no and then just follow him <laughs> the entire night no i mean wide eyed no, and like, just behind boys him. night like you go have fun i'm not gonna be at the bar drinking with you guys like that's not my scene no no you can't get in I can't even get in either. <laughs> they like if it's at like David Buster's, I can't even go in there to play an arcade game sometimes. Yeah, it's after, uh, I think it's like after 8 o'clock or something. Yeah, like you have to be with someone 25 years or older. I called them the other day because I wanted to go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The like, things that 18 year olds were, like, worry about is getting their fake ID and going to the club. And I'm like, I can't get into David Buster's to play basketball, like, arcade basketball. So there's a lot of people on Instagram that have a big following and a lot of them want to be singers or musicians. Yeah. What separates you from them? That's a really good question because that's like a main thing I kind of talk about, I guess, is so when I grew up, I was one of the first people to release a cover song. It was like me and Madeline Bailey and Johnny Orlando and Carson leaders were like the only four people doing covers. And so I was already doing it way before like all these people and way before, oh, I have 5 million followers, so now I'm going to try singing. I have 5 million followers, so I'm going to release a song. It was like, I moved to LA, I did a cover, I have like 45 million views or something. So I was already ahead and Mm -hmm. What separates me is that I didn't just all of a sudden was like, oh, let me just release a song because I know fans are going to buy it and I'm going to make so much money. It was like not like that at all with me. It was a passion of mine, something I always wanted to do. And I did it early on. And I don't know. It's just like I hate that now that I have 5 million followers, I'm looked at as a social media influencer. It's like I was a singer. I'm a dancer. Like I'm not a social media influencer, but because I have followers, that's just what people label you as. But I'm, I'm just a singer, and I have five million followers. Like I'm not a social media influencer, you know. 
So you got the big following from dancing and singing. Yeah. You didn't just get a big following and then decide that's what I'm going to be now. Yeah, no, no, no. I just got a following because, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) People started following me and because they saw my music videos and my dancing on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. So are you going to continue making YouTube videos, whether it's like the dating things or all those YouTube videos, moving forward are you going to focus solely on the music so i'm going to focus solely on the music it's just now in the time of the whole year and a half i didn't want to give my fans nothing so i was like okay i'm gonna do youtube videos to give them something to watch and in the time being of me transforming and in the studio so that was just what i was doing at that time so that i wasn't inactive and Mm -hmm. you know gone off of instagram i wasn't gonna just turn everything off and then turn it back on but it's going to be way more music forward and my youtube channel is a music channel it's not a it's under music so it was just because i wanted to give my fans something to watch yeah you vlog sometimes and you do yeah. different challenges well see it's fun and i i still want to vlog even though even if i'm not a youtuber or anything because i just love it and i love making the videos so i probably will continue it but just not as much as i do now got it you have a lot going on. Do you have a date for the EP? We do not have a date for the EP. It's very soon, though, because I'll be releasing a single before the EP or two singles before. So look out for that after leave drops probably every month and then leading up to about March, April. And you said you wrote, you had a hand in writing two of the records, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Let me think. Cover Up was a song I wrote. And then other songs, I like, you know, could tweak a couple lyrics or anything, but Cover Up was the main song that I was writing on and in like the most attached to, yeah. Why was that the song for you? Well, it because I was in the studio and it was right after my breakup, so the whole song is about exactly what I was going through. I read him, so during our relationship in the hard times, I would write what I was going through or write things I wanted to say to him or anything in my notes because I'm not a confrontational person and if someone is being mad at me or anything I will just shut up and cry like I'm not a person to yell back I will never I'll never do anything like that so I'll write it in my notes and make it into a song so is that covering up your feelings yes it's about it's about him trying to cover things up that he's done or me covering up my feelings. It's about a lot of things and mainly just heartbreak, getting through it, and I don't know, there's a little tea in the song too. Oh, did he cheat? (laughs) No, I don't, I mean, you don't know. Like I, I didn't ask, like he moved on right away. I moved on and I hope not, you know, you don't really know. It's not like, oh, hey, he cheated on you. I never found out, but yeah. Any part of you maybe at one point thought that that relationship was solely for like fame? Yes and no, It because I did think that a little bit and then he deactivated his Instagram for a long time and huh. then I was like, okay, but then he started dating another girl after who had followers so a lot of people just went to, oh, he dated this girl for followers, now he's dating this girl for followers, but I mean, I knew the person that he was and I didn't think that ever, so, but fans did and other people saw, but I never got that vibe ever. Is it hard to have a majority of your relationships be linked to social media and YouTube? Yes, of course, because it, and I guess a lot of people could say this, if you're a YouTuber and you you make videos with your boyfriends, it's, it's almost like, what's good about me is that I don't ever make it my job or anything. Like I, my channel's not me and my boyfriend, you know, it's, I do vlogs, I do everything else, I do music. So it's like, just for fun, I put a video out there. So it's not like that really. I get it. It's cool. What's this guy's name that we're talking about here? The X? The X, yeah. Oh, his name is Brandon. Brandon. I don't know Brandon. I'm going to look Brandon up. (laughs) (laughs) Good good luck over there. Uh, Leave. That is a single. It's totally worth your ear. I mean, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm going to listen to it. We'll play it for you after. Please, because I've been looking at all the teasers. Mm. It looks amazing, and Mm. all of the visuals look great. Did you find him? Yeah, I found Brandon. (laughs) Brandon, what's the last name? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're blowing up a spot. We'll bleep that out so nobody knows. 
We don't want to add any more followers to his <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a rapper now. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe you guys could collaborate, do a song together one don't, day. Please don't. For oh a thousand God, reasons, don't People do People would it. freak out. People would freak out. Is your Jordan going to do music now? No. No, he's not going to he try to get it. He can sing, though. He can sing, but his, he, I don't know, he just wants to be a millionaire, so. So, okay, great. How? <laughs> well, he's, he is very driven, so whatever, he's like me, like, okay, I want this song to be a hit, so I'm going to make the song a hit, and I, I want to work with this person, so I'm going to work with this person. So, he, his whole thing is I'm going to buy a Lamborghini in a year, so he's working his way there. He, he has a a lot of things that he does so yeah are you disheartened if what you want doesn't come through or do you turn that into some form of motivation of course yeah if something doesn't happen or i don't reach my goal that year i double it for the next year so i have to catch up and then reach it again so i like that yeah what does growing up in a dance community as a fellow dancer uh they are very intense individuals to be around and they're very competitive and uh, I mean, be, I, I was the only guy in the class, so I got to watch all these girls interact, and mm-hmm. it <laughs> made me uncomfortable. There's a lot of drama yeah. and a lot of competition, but if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't I wouldn't have that in me, you know? Like, I, but it's also bad because it takes into everything my everyday life. Like, we were, we were playing football the other day, and I... I was like, okay, like I need to make the touchdown. Like I was competitive, even though I had never, I don't know anything about football. I was like, I need to be better than everybody else here. <laughs> it's like always with me anywhere I go. But does that make you better at being able to handle all of the kids you're coming in contact with today, whether they're dramatic or catty or like whatever it is? Yes, because it's, and also if the dramatic and like catty people and the rude people, it's you're you're always. If you're the nicer one and the, if you just are positive and everything, you're already, you know, you're already on top because if you have negative attitude and you're rude to people, that's, that's never going to get you to the top. You have to be nice to everybody and lovable and positive and that's what makes a successful person. Truth. 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 Maybe Abby Lee Miller could have taken that advice earlier. <gasps> Ooh. Was that a burn? She's really, she's really intense, but she, well, she, she's doing, I know she's so sick. I follow her very heavily. I like her. I'm actually a really big fan. <laughs> well, she's not like that off camera though. It's, it's just a persona for the camera, but there is times where she's still strict off camera, but it's all her character. It, she plays it up. She plays it up and it works. And she's so funny though. Like, she's such a funny person. And she, she just commented on my photo the other day, like, I was like, where have you been? Like, I it was my happy new year photo and I was kissing my boyfriend and I'm 18 and she comments, where is your mother? I'm like, Abby, I'm 18, but she's right there. <laughs> like, I still live with my mom. I'm still a mama's girl. My dad's out here right now seeing all this unfold, the single, the billboard's out tomorrow and we're having wow. a release party. So. You have a billboard? Yes, it's going out tomorrow on Sunset and La Brea. Cool. Prime real estate there. But Abby's yeah. a character, but you are not? <laughs> no. You're just yourself. Uh, there's some days, you know, where I'm I'm a little down and stuff or whatever it is, or I'm just quiet, yeah. No, I'm never really, like, anything other than right, like, I don't know, even if I'm going through something, I'll never show it. If I that get makes it. Sense. You know, because that's just also the thing that you put on for your fans. You have to be a role model. If you're going through something, of course you can talk about it, but you can't be a Debbie Downer and all. Like, it's, I was telling my mom this yesterday. It was like, if you, if you don't like your life or you, and you're mad about this and you're mad about that, just change it. Like, if you are mad about your relationship and you're so unhappy, just get out of it. Like, there's always ways to do something. And if you don't do it, then you'll always be stuck there. Testify. Amen. Mm-hmm. Stamped. Jordan Jones. Yeah. An honor. Mm-hmm. Thank Thanks you, for guys. hanging out. The EP. Listen to it. Haven't listened to it. It's coming soon. But leave is worth your ear. <laughs> no date on the EP? No date yet. How many songs? Five or six. Cool. Cover up's one of them. Final Cover thought? Up and leave. Oh, both on it. I wanted to ask, did what? you know XXX Tentacion or just you knew him? No, I didn't know him. Oh. And I never saw him live. And I will forever be sad. Like, 
uh, he was my favorite artist or my favorite like rap artist. He was my ringtone like the day he died. Like I I've had his music for I knew about him before EXO Tour Life came out. He like I don't know. I just loved everything about him. Obviously, obviously there's stuff I don't agree with like everybody else, but I was just in it for the music really. Mm-hmm. I he made good music. I loved it. He was my ringtone and What was it about his lyrics that resonated with you? See, I my manager sent me this thing the other day. It's like the photo of the nice innocent little girl with the rap lyrics under it, and I'm like, "See, I just like hip hop. I like being in mosh pits. I like I don't know. <laughs> Have like, you ever been in a mosh pit? Yeah, I love mosh pits. <laughs> I, I, I peed myself like, in one once. I will, I will listen to the lyrics, and even though I'm like jamming in it and like screaming the lyrics, like I have no idea these Zans that they're talking about, and they're <laughs> coding or all these things. But like, I just love the music, you know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the music. There's a lot of people that are like. Wow, you're like so innocent and pure and positive. Like, why do you listen to rap music? I'm like, I don't know. Like, Juice World's my favorite, bro. Like, <laughs> I get Juice World because he's talking about things that are a, at least a little bit more relatable than Codeine uh, and all the other stuff. Uh, no, no. I mean, okay. Maybe you know, like, some like Juice World. Yeah, I don't songs, know all of them. I know the ones that are on the radio. There's this song called Black and White that's. I don't even want to say the lyrics, but he's talking about doing a lot of things and the, a lot of things. Yeah. So, is the music about the lyrics for you? Or is it about the beat and the production? I don't. I think it's more about having fun and without doing know. anything that's mentioned in the song. Yeah, it's it's almost like I can say it because I don't do it, or I like literally I can't tell you why I like rap music. My manager does not like it. He's like, you need to be listening to pop songs. You you need to be listening to this artist that's on the come up. And I'm like. I'm just gonna be over here listening to my Juice World, like. <laughs> <laughs> it, I I don't know. And Keep I'm thriving. Like, yeah, I like festivals and uh, it just and that's like another thing. A goal for this year slash next year is to um, perform at Coachella or EDC or something mm. like that. And wow. maybe even if Leave blows up, he said that he will be performing at EDC and stuff, so he'll bring me out. So that's just like so exciting and a goal that I definitely have in mind. Wow, that is pretty cool. Yep. Very, very cool. Because then instead of being in the mosh pits, people are going to be mosh pitting yeah. to my song. But what, kidding, not mosh pits, but. what mosh pits were you in? Who's, like, who's concert? Lil Uzi and um, uh, 21 Savage. Got there was it. like wigs flying around in the concert. <laughs> Nav. <laughs> wow. um, Did you get hit? Did you oh push yeah, back? Oh yeah, I almost sprained my ankle in like two of them. <laughs> Did you push back? Your mom's going to freak you? out. <laughs> Wait, what? Wigs, yeah, there was wigs flying around, and they were like, I don't know, all the girls were just throwing their wigs up in the songs. It's, but like, Wig. literally, I would, I would wait my turn in the mosh pit, and I would throw myself in it, and I'd jump, and then like almost break my ankles. I'd fall on the floor at could at day and night. But it's like, I'm not messed up, so like, I'm not stupid in those things, you know? Yeah, I get Everyone it. else is just messed up so, so bad that they do like crazy things and they get hurt, but. I mean, I do get hurt, but... <laughs> if I saw you in a mosh pit, I would just protect you at all costs. I think she would have to protect you. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm a professional. Professional mosh pitter. Dude, I'm telling you, I... <laughs> I'll add that to my bio. Like, singer, dancer, professional mosh pitter. I got caught in one once, and it, it's a nightmare that sticks with me. <laughs> like, um, when you go to, like, a Travis Scott concert, he'll be like, open up the mosh pits, open up. So they're just huge. They're so fun. Okay, <laughs> love it. Oh, I'll I'll enjoy from far away, where nobody can punch me. But what's scary is if you're just paying attention, like watching the person, and then all of a sudden, like you're in the middle. That's what's happened to me before, and it ruins mosh pits for me. Oh, yeah, and I didn't know. That's and the best, and you're already in it. No, no, no. I was taken off. I was uh, I was caught off guard, literally. But uh, wow, respect, Jordan Jones. Mm-hmm. Thanks Thank for hanging out, dude. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Dude. You rock. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.